Hi there, friends. I'll come in here with a quick note to let you know that the first global product owner summit organized by the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is coming soon. To know more, check out the uh, bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's all one word, all lowercase. And uh, stick around to the end of the episode to know more. But for now, on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday Leading Change episode this week with Mike Salogub. Hi, Mike. Welcome back. Hi, Vasco. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So Wednesday is when we talk about change and change leadership, of course, because that's one of the things we do all the time as Scrum Masters. So tell us a story of a change process you were involved with. Walk us through what happened, like the steps of that change process and highlight for us the tools, the tips, the tricks, the techniques you learned back then that you still apply today? Yeah. So when I first starting out, we were heavily waterfall in our uh, delivery of various marketing entities on our website. And uh, my old boss and mentor basically brought to the table this idea of agile, and it would change the exact way of how we deliver uh, our our capabilities, how we deliver outcomes. Uh, and we went completely from waterfall to agile overnight in this pilot program. So he mentioned, we, he mentioned this to me and I thought I would, I had a better stake as a product owner. And uh, he said, no, nope, you, you fit the scrum master role a bit more. So I didn't really know much about it. So I had to completely learn a brand new role overnight. We went through a workshop with another mentor um, that was a scrum master agile coach for years and years and years with the Air Force and various financial firms. And he was working at the same company and leading a change for a different division. So we went overnight from- And that was you and the team, right? Yes, yeah, so us and the select members of the development team were part of this pilot agile team that uh, was gonna work basically in sprints. We were gonna have sprint reviews, the whole, all the ceremonies uh and we went from basically that ticketed system to uh you know the typical you would see in intranets with for teams that you get a ticket it gets done or not and then you get an email saying it was completed no if answer buts it's just a, you know, a project management software no retrospectives no nothing no no iteration on it. It was just, I need this, please deliver this. So we started this pilot program and it took us a couple of workshops to get under, get our feet under us. And we had our first spring coming up and our developers, we would set, we'd make our tickets every day. We'd have our stand up, And then by noontime, we would have some developers saying, yeah, I finished all my work for the sprint. Um, I got nothing else to do. Maybe I'm going to start with sprint too. And we saw that more and more, and we would have to tell them, no, you want to you know, work with the team to make sure that we hit our sprint goals. We don't want to get too far ahead. It throws off our whole entire um, backlog and other stuff. And, like and also there, there might be conflict, right? Because some stuff would break and then, you know, <laughs> how do you handle it? Of course, it? you get started on your sprint two tickets, but now you have to fix some defects that QA found. So now you have to drop that to go back to here and then sprint... It, work starts piling up and now you can't get to sprint too. So all these aspects, but we had, a, we, our developers would, they would underestimate and it, they would get this work done so quick. Meanwhile, we needed them to more think on a holistic iterative basis. So working with some junior developers there and kind of telling them not to bite off more than they can chew and having that when we had that first retrospective, it was it was flush with ideas. Oh, we could do this. We could do that. We so could do ideas that. about the product, right? No, ideas about the work coming up. So so the content of, of the work, like the the requirements or mm -hmm. user stories or whatever. Yeah. So now instead of underestimating, we completely overestimated all. Uh, I'm sorry. Instead of overestimating all our work, now we've underestimated all our work. So Sprint Two comes along, and these senior developers aren't getting the work done as quickly as they thought. And now they have to help the junior developers with some work and code review. 
And then now we have defects from QA and now the work starts piling up and we get to the sprint two retro, not hitting any of our sprint goals. And that retro was, it starts with finger pointing and it starts with, well, you didn't get me this work done on time. Well, I can't get this done unless this person gets there. And the one person out of four that got all his tickets done sits back and says, I don't see a problem. So <laughs> yeah, because it's that. me, right? It's not the team. Yeah. It's me. <laughs> right, you guys didn't get, you. oh, <laughs> Hmm. Like I, I got it all done and <laughs> um, hitting into that sprint three, it was now starting to click with them how and why we estimate as we do and how and why we, we structure this work on an iterative basis to focus on delivering that value at the each, at the each sprint. So our first two sprints, we, you know, got, went through the rigmarole and then sprint three, we start actually hitting tangible goals. And now all the developers are starting to click and they're starting to see and QA is now has a healthy backlog. And by sprint five, now we're just zooming. And at the end of sprint six, although we weren't ready to completely deliver it because we had some issues with QA and PTO and life gets in the way, uh, both capacity. Um, we delivered a week behind schedule, schedule with a pilot program when it was supposed to cut off. But we delivered more features than our stakeholders intended. And when we showcased and demoed to the stakeholders the final product, the quote unquote final version one MVP product, they were absolutely floored with all these extra features that they didn't even want because they didn't even know that they wanted. They didn't even know that was possible. And it was, and I've said this in previous episodes, it was just, it, it was the perfect storm of a team adversity and team conflict and how they came together to really outperform beyond their wildest expectations because they took the time to fail. They failed often and they focused on what and how they failed and changed it. So one of the things that I hear here, of course, when, when the change started, you focused on training, right? You had those workshops to, to support the team in understanding what was expected. But uh, no surprise, the workshops weren't enough because when they actually started working, first they were completely overestimating the work, then they were underestimating the work. The, first, they were trying to do more than what they had committed to the second sprint. They couldn't do what they had committed to. Like there was this... Uh, I would say like natural adaptation to this new way of working that was going on. But as you were describing this, you, you were also pointing to the retrospective as kind of a key moment for the team to understand where they were and maybe fine tune how, how they worked. W was there something else like that, that you guys were putting in place to support this transformation for that team, right? Because they, they were going from waterfall to scrum through this process. So the one thing I will say, we had our boss in many of our meetings um, and he was a, he had no responsibility. He had no accountability for the team or the responsibility for the team, but this was his pilot program that he really went to bat for. And, you know, I see him randomly and I'll say, you know, thank him for it because it changed my life. Um, it, it was more of the, uh, the looming authority, the, you know, the wizard of all the person behind the curtain, making sure like we had to get this done to make it to really be a catalyst for that change and a catalyst for the individual team members to change and change often and really not dwell on the personal effects of how it, how it feels for them, but more of we need to get this done. So how are we going to get this done? Okay. I'll see this a different way. Okay, I will make sure I focus on this element, even though I really want to focus on that element. Um, and it really catapulted our change. Absolutely, and the the aspect of support might all like the support from the manager, of course, might also have helped the team to have uh, healthy rather than unhealthy conflict, right? Because the boss is there, right? And you don't want to. Uh, it's okay to have conflict, but because the boss is there, you want to always show value, right? And you have to kind of converge to that uh, delivery mindset rather than who's right mindset. It was appropriate professional conflict, you know, it, and, it, and they kept the personal conflict at bay because there was a mission to get done. 
And, we had and they were reminded of that mission regularly. Yes. And it was on the, the manager's, you know, his, his, his behind was on the line for it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, I mean, I'm imagining that the boss was also helping you guys with stuff behind the scenes, like talking to people, getting things unblocked and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, removing any vendor issues that they had that we didn't want to focus on. It was like the Scrum Master, Scrum Master. It's really now thinking about it, it was an RTE type of um, role. Yeah, so RTE or Release Train Engineer in SAFE. All right, that was a great story. Thank you for sharing that, Mike. Of course, anytime. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around. This year's first global summit dedicated to the product owner role in Scrum will have some amazing keynotes and two tracks filled with first-hand stories and experiences for product owners to learn more about that critical Scrum role. We'll have Roman Pichler, author and product expert, who will be answering your questions and sharing the most important aspects of the product owner role. We'll also have Colleen Johnson talking about why roadmaps are probably making your life much harder than it needs to be and uh, what to do instead. This talk was quite a success in Agile Online Summit 2022 and Colleen has learned some new tricks, tools, techniques that she will share with us when it comes to roadmaps for the product owner role. And we will also have Henrik Nibery, author of Scrum and Kanban from the Trenches, as well as one of the creators of the Spotify model. So come in and listen to his stories. And uh, we'll also have, of course, two tracks with uh, many more sessions and even some live sessions. The two tracks will cover practices every product owner should know, uh, where we'll be hosting conversations on topics that product owners need to be familiar with like product backlog refinement planning and much more the second track will be on metrics measuring product and personal success as a product owner as product owners it's crucial to have a clear understanding of what are the metrics that drive success for us and of course also for the products and businesses that we work with and we need to continuously measure and optimize those metrics So in this track, we'll be sharing what's working and what's not in the area of managing success for product owners. We will also have the opportunity to network with our peers. It's a network event, of course. So get your tickets and join our Slack. Go to uh, bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's all one word, all lowercase. As always, we will have free tickets and VIP tickets, which will give you long-term access to the content of this summit. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023, all lowercase, all one word. I'll see you on the summit floor. Leading change is one of the core skills we must acquire, but it is only one of the steps towards our success as Scrum Masters. Tomorrow, On Success Thursday, we will talk about how to define success for the Scrum Master role, we'll cover tips on how to measure your way to that position, and most importantly, how to develop that focus on continuous improvement that is as important for Scrum Masters as it is for teams. See you tomorrow.